Hello and welcome to another Thursday night grind. What's happening? My name is Matt and it is Thursday night. It's uh, around 8.30 and it is May 21st, 2020. And it is also episode 21 of the Thursday night grind where every Thursday night I show you how I sharpen something on the bench here at the American Edge. And tonight is no exception. Check this thing out. Oh, I was stoked to see this is the real deal. And uh, it occurred to me because the uh, the owner of this said, "Hey, I didn't see it on your website. Do you sharpen cleavers?" And to me, it's a you know cleavers are another kitchen knife, so they yeah. Uh, but um, this is this is the first time I've seen one of these. That's exciting. But I'll, I'll show you how I do that. There, it's not going to be it's not going to be too groundbreaking. But before I do. Um, I wanted to share some observations that I have, and that was, uh, so this past weekend, uh, you know, a few days ago now, there was this event called Sharpener's Jam, and it would be happening in Georgia, I believe, uh, but this year, because of the coronavirus, it was held virtually on uh, Facebook and YouTube, and also, yeah, like, I just, I just watch sharpening videos, right, um, but anyway, there's this there's this vibe I'm picking up out there like sharpeners aren't working and like like much of the economy because of this pandemic, uh, people aren't working. And for those sharpeners who have dedicated their their business to the beautician industry, like the when the when the hairdressers and salons are told by the government that they can't be in business or they're, yeah, like straight up either told that or, you know, highly recommended that they are not, then all the downstream of effects of that include the sharpener. So it makes total sense to me. Uh, but my observation was that my model is really the opposite and that my, my business has gone up. I've actually had to throttle it meaning I like now take appointments. It's still a side hustle of mine, right? Like I, I still only do an hour a night, so I can't just keep taking new customers. The, like I can't be, I can't take credit for any of it. It's not like I, I planned the business model around a pandemic and it's actually somewhat surprising to me how much business there is. Uh, even at that, like I'm still on track to not quite double my monthly revenue which is great. It's awesome. But it is the, the observation is that it's in polar contrast to what I'm seeing in the rest of the, in, in not the rest, but at least I'm seeing in the sharpening community. Like not, not many other sharpeners who are putting out content are saying, hey, like it's banging right now. But that gave me pause because it, they didn't see this coming and none of us see what's coming next. We have no idea which way the economy is going to turn after the the pandemic. So I just took a moment to spend a little energy thinking about what are the what are the situations or what are the aspects of my business model that are making it uh, like live and, and almost thrive in these conditions. And then what are the what are the other things that could negatively impact the business model? So I spent some time thinking about that and I posted a uh, video, the, uh, the five top tips to stay resilient in uncertain times. And I, I shared that over in the Guild of Professional Sharpeners, which is really my, my new pet project. Um, so if you want to see that, if you want to learn more about that, make sure you hit me up. That'll be going, it'll be going live soon and uh we're, we're shaking it out right now so that's the sort of stuff you can expect over there and so much more another good one over there was like uh, somebody reached out to me about a real mower today one of those ones you you push and shh, shh, shh. um I've, I've i've always turned them down like i'm not knowing much about them but because i've built these relationships with other sharpeners and uh in particular doug is he pretty much taught me how to do real mowers so i said yeah i'll do it I'll do it. So anyway, there's there, there's that and there's going to be so much more. I'm so amped about this project, uh, the Guild of Professional Sharpeners. So you will be hearing more about that in the future. But for now, let's dive into this cleaver. And one thing I'm concerned that I don't always give enough attention to in the videos is the inspection that takes place on whatever comes across the bench. And I, I inspect everything. Like honestly, before I go live, like I, I build a plan on how I'm going to 
sharp and all this stuff. So I've inspected it. But what did just catch my eye is that there are some chips on there. They're not, they're not, I, I'm not even sure you're going to be able to see them. But I can see them. All right, so we're going to have to do a little work. The first thing we're going to do is clean that up. That is a nice old, look how it looks, it's been banged on. I don't know, like what would you use this for? Leave, let me know in the comments, like what? I, I'm thinking meat processing, but dang. All right, so what would you, what? This was, oh, the, and just so you know, like this is another thing that makes me so happy about the sharpening uh, field is uh, that this is the, this is the, the owner's grandfather's cleaver, right? So like this has been passed down. And that's something that, you know, I'm, I'm really honored to be part of that and to be able to bring, give this back to her in a condition that is far superior than, than she found it. She got it. So uh, I'm, I'm happy to be part of that. Um, first thing we got to do is clean it up. So let's head over here. I did the video before about how I sharpen or how I clean rust off of knives. And I mentioned in that video that for pretty much any carbon steel blade, I'm going to do a process like this. So now we have one. So let's, let's just do it and see how it shakes out. This is, uh, in the case you didn't see that video, the process includes an abrasive powdered cleaner. I'm using Barkeeper's Friend, but it doesn't have to be Barkeeper's Friend. I'm going to move that out of the way. Give myself a little room. liberal dose of that and now it's time to uh, time to get into it well, make sure you are careful to not cut yourself obviously but and you want your you want to, like I'm leaning on it right like so you want to be set up in a place where you can Get a little hungry. All right, make sure we don't miss a spine. Got some more cleaner on this side. It's gonna be a little bit here on the this edge too. Tell this is going to take a nice edge. This is a, a nice carbon steel. All right, let's see how that came out. Clean up here. Okay. Let me adjust the angle. You can see that. I mean, there's definitely still tons of character in this blade, but that. Definitely, uh, definitely brought it a new, a new look. Okay, so now let's talk about how we're going to sharpen this thing. First, the inspection here. There are some tiny chips, but it's not too bad. It's it's wicked thick. The steel is big, right? And that's 
not a problem. Just understand that you, it takes a lot of, you got to remove quite a bit of steel to go from this thickness to an edge. Looks like somewhat of a, yeah, I'm just looking. It doesn't look flat, right? It looks, it looks like a, a convex ground grind right now. Uh, I think what I'm going to do is go feel it on the, uh, I see, uh, we just, we exposed a marking here. Hobbs, something in Hobbs. We'll have to look that up. Something in Hobbs. The rest of that marking's worn away, but. All right, let me know if you know who, uh, who the Hobbs uh, bladesmiths are. And when, what, if we could put, a, put an approximate date on that, that would be cool. All right, so anyway, let's start on the 1x30 and see how that looks. And then my plan, I think I'm going to go 1x30 like I do with, with so many, and then um, just pop, finish that edge on the, on the Edge Pro. Okay, let's go over there. A little bit of my own light. So I'm going to just do a, a pass. So it's going to be like you, it's going to be not a, I'm probably thinking like a 25, 23, 25 degree bevel. But let's take a pass or two. And, uh, and what I like to do is just kind of come up against it and then see where the, see where the marks are. And that helps me adjust my, what my angle is going to be on the belt. And that takes, uh, takes practice. But then once you pick it, you can kind of keep doing it. Okay, this is the noisy part, right? I got a couple chips here, but not too bad, really. Alright, so I'm definitely, I got a burr on the whole edge now. I'm just, uh, I want to get past those chips a little bit. Couple more. Good, real soon. Got my my glass here. I'm just gonna. Whew, that's nice. That's gonna take an edge for sure. Okay. That is cool. All right, let's go to the Edge Pro. That's that is that is good. All 
You may be wondering, how are we going to set this thing up on the edge grub? See, it is not too hard. I actually, excuse me, just before I, I started recording, I actually sized it up to make sure that it would fit. And um, so I actually already have the, the guide set here. It's going to be a little high on this edge, but that is so that there is enough over here. All right, so now let's get... Uh, Get some stones going. 220, 600, 1100. I've been liking that progression actually. I've been doing that a little bit lately. You, you may recall, I think it was last Thursday night grind, I went right from the 120 to the 1100 and spoke a little bit about that. I kind of like throwing the 600 grit there in the middle. So 220. I think I just said 120 by mistake. And that's not bad. That's 21 degrees, and it looks it's getting the edge. I think I'm going to go with it. I was thinking I'd go a little steeper, but I'm, I'm feeling pretty good about the quality of this steel. We'll check it here to make sure that I'm getting it all. Oh, yeah, as we work out, I might... Yeah, it looks like we're going to get it the whole way. Right, so as with this thick steel, sometimes you, you, you got to bring the, the arm up a little bit to get a little steeper angle. And with the, like you could, my imagination is that this is using more of a, more of a uh, chopping than a slicing application. Yeah, and actually I'm not quite getting it up there. I think I'm going to come up to 20, um, that's 24 there. Let's go a little bit under the blue line. Let's see what we get. There we go. Yeah, all right. I like, I'm, I'm cool with that. Check out this side. Hope you're all making it through this pandemic all right. I feel bad for the uh, those guys that are not getting the same work they were. All right, so right, I'm good right up until the tip. Might have to hang this off the edge a little bit more to bring that angle back down. But even still, I can tell I'm not quite getting it. That is worthy to me of another pass. Right, so I could sit here and saw way out on the edge row. Or I can take a pass or two. The other thing is that the edge is not symmetrical down there. I'm getting a way bigger burr on the left hand side than I am on the right. So I'll take a, f let's go back to the one by 30 and take a few more passes focused there at the tip. See if we can bring that edge back into the, the center of the steel. So this might be a first for Thursday Night Grind, heading back to the 1x30. Don't be afraid to do that. Sometimes I have been and spend way more time sawing than I need to. <laughs> Checking for temperature. It sucks thick steel. Like I'm not not heating it up. 
But still, you want to keep an eye on that. That's what I mean by taking more off this side and pushing, pushing the edge back into the center of the thickness of the steel. I'm not going to worry about it a whole lot. My biggest concern is that the, that the stone will get out to the edge. So I want to go back to the edge to see how that looks. Follow me. Let's start my stone back in. Still not getting it. This one might actually be be a little bit of work. Not too far off. How am I on this side? I'm dropping in the uh, the two the one twenty stone. I can tell I'm not at the edge. But I'm not too far off, and I'm wondering if I can just get there with the uh, with that stone, or whether I need to go back to remove even more material. I don't want that bevel to be ginormous. I think it, for no reason other than it doesn't look good, in my opinion. Let's see if we can get some steel off a little quicker with the coarser stone just enough to get that edge built you know and this is good like this is a real common thing and it's real easy to miss this and if you do you're not sharpening the knife you know what I mean if you're not cutting all the way to the edge <laughs> yeah we'll get there So I can see where I'm, where that grind is. And that looks pretty good there. And we're almost there, there, a little bit more right there. Small burr. Don't need a big burr. That's a that is a a wide bevel. Again, we could pick the uh, could pick the angle up even more if we wanted to. Checking for a burr here. Gotta be building a burr, and I got a small one. Let's just make sure that we're putting a burr on there with. The 120. This is another thing I like about doing these uncut, because this is all stuff I'd I'd remove and just say like oh, I had to take more off, you know. Because it does make for boring video, so thank you for hanging in there. Got a good burr there. But it's all work that's got to be done. And if you don't do it, you're not doing the customer any favors. Check for a burr. Right there and right there. Not the whole thing, though. 
There we go. I can see a change color there. There we go. Okay, good. Let's just do a full pass with this stone. We already did back here, but just to make sure we get it all. Looks good. Good, good. Going on to the 600 grit. This is the conventional stone from Edge Pro. For a while, I was finishing knives with this 600 grit. I actually really like this stone. Okay, back to this side. Cut that burr off. Yeah, this one went a little longer. I had that, had that little adjustment we had to make there and I did rim my gums there for a little bit but so this is a that's a 10 inch blade which means that's going to be a ten dollar job and at 20 minutes it's not exactly hitting my ideal uh doll you know time to income ratio but it's all right it's kind of fun right like it's, this thing's kind of sweet So I'm cool with it. Cut that burr off. Come back over. Nice little honing pull stroke. Honing pull stroke. And that blade is done. Let's just wipe her down. What I don't often include in these videos is the like the washing and the wrapping. Woo, yeah, it's definitely, definitely an edge. Woo, yep. Got it. Oh, that's awesome. All right. I hope that you drive some value from that. If you did, please make sure you hit the subscribe button and smash the thumbs up because this brings you value. Hit the bell so that you're reminded every Thursday night we sharpen something on the bench. If there's something you want to see, let me know in the comments. If you want to reach out about anything at all, I'll leave my email in the description. So see you guys on the other side. I hope you're doing great. And thank you so much for, for being along for this ride. Cheers.